yeah, Carly, Carly, her best friend, I know, is really struggling. And, I'm, you know, my heart goes out to her because I know what it's like mm. to lose a best friend. And, um, you know, especially when you're trying to save them. I know, I know that when I found out she was ill, I knew Nikki was ill in the last lockdown. You know, she told me not to say, and um, she was getting care, you know. But, um, yeah, she rang me up and was like, Peter Mill, come and get me <laughs> in the clinic. And, uh, um, but, you know, uh, I was busy at the time. But then this this second lockdown happens, and, um, yeah, I remember seeing that... Uh, seeing the fundraiser that Carly and Leon had made to get her. I was like, oh, my God, she's really, really ill, man. So I was in London at the time, and I just rushed. I just went, got in the cab and went over there with my, my girlfriend, who's a mental health nurse, and we just tried to, you know, give her as much love and support. And um, and because it's me, you know, me and Nikki had, a, you know, a great connection. With, with, so I thought that I'd, the love that I, you know, would just boost her up and get her out of the darkness, you know, and... Because this lockdown has been really hard for people with mental health issues. Like this has really highlighted it. You know, look what it's, look what it's done. You know what I mean? It's taken one of the you know uh, one of the, the best characters the, the the world's ever you know seen. It's look, it's just rubbish, man. You know, so um, heart goes out to all our fans. I'm getting so many nice messages as well in my inbox. Um, and um, thank you so much for all the lovely support that all all her fans. And the Big Brother 7 fans have been giving me and to the rest of the Big Brothers cast, we've all been getting so much love and we really appreciate it. I can yeah. say that we all, we're all really cut up and I'm, I just, yeah, I can't really put into words yet. It's still really a quite a sore subject. It's estimated that over 1.25 million people are struggling with eating disorders at any given time. Um, and it is really important that we raise awareness around eating disorders and that those people have somewhere to go and get help and feel that they can do so. And, and often when we, do, when we do talk about eating disorders, what we, what we don't necessarily look at is, is something like this where it does lead to death. But, I mean, obviously that, that happens far too often. Do you think we don't take these conditions seriously enough? Sadly, anorexia nervosa has the highest mortality rate of any mental health illness. Uh, it is a very serious uh, health condition. All mental health is... Uh, eating disorders are very complex mental health disorders uh, and they need specialist intervention, which is why I would really encourage anybody who's suffering or anybody who sees a family member or friend suffering to seek help at the earliest opportunity. And what help is out there? Because, it, I mean, it is clearly for people who are seeing themselves in a very different light to how the world sees them, a huge obstacle to get over. Absolutely. The first step is to see your GP. Um, there is a lot of information on BEAT's website, which can help in understanding what condition you may be suffering with and can give you some vital information about how to communicate this with your doctor. Uh, but getting to your doctor and getting a referral for an eating disorder service is the first point of call. And the sooner that happens, the generally the, the faster and more sustained recovery can be. Is it possible, is it ethical for someone to, to step in on behalf of somebody else, because it, it, it is very difficult to take that initial step, I would imagine, for someone to say, I have a problem. Can someone step in and say, my loved one has a problem? Definitely. The first thing I would recommend would be to actually have a, a, a conversation with your loved one. Try and pick a time that isn't around a meal time and isn't a contentious um, point of the day. But again, the BEAT website has got some guidance for anybody who needs to talk to somebody and raise the fact that they think they may have an issue and will give advice and support about doing that. Um, it has been shown that family intervention and the support of close family and friends can really, really aid somebody's recovery. So if somebody close to you is suffering, then I would absolutely say yes, have that conversation and support them. What, what sort of recoveries can people see? I mean, can, is there a bright future for people? Is there a sustained recovery for people? Yes, we believe recovery is possible. Uh, we know a lot of 
people who have suffered very badly with eating disorders and can then go on to lead a, a relatively normal life. Um, there's always an awareness and a, a need to monitor mental health, as, as we all need to do, but recovery is absolutely possible. The key to that being a full and sustained recovery, as I say, is getting that treatment early, getting help and getting support will really aid that recovery.